Welcome everybody. Let's take a look at this problem. Here we have a car going uphill, then just going down a normal road, then again going downhill. The uphill and the downhill portions are in a circular motion. And we're told that we have constant velocity. If we have a constant speed, um, then v square over r holds true for uniform circular motion. And that points at a radial acceleration. What a radial acceleration talks about is that their acceleration towards the center of the circle. Um, that acceleration is happening because the path keeps changing, trying to get you to go towards the center of the circle. Okay, so we are given a constant speed. So we know we have a constant v square over r and a constant radial acceleration. With that in mind, let's try to solve this. When we're going up at the top of the hill, the hill will push up, so there will be a normal force because of that. Gravity will pull down, so there will be force of gravity because of that. We can assign signs. We'll say normal force up is positive, or force of gravity down is negative because they're in opposite directions. And there is acceleration towards the center of the circle. Where is the center of the circle? Given the diagram, it's at the bottom, right? It's a hill, so the center of the circle is towards the bottom. So acceleration is towards the bottom. And that means it has to have a negative sign, right? So let's look at the sum of all the forces in the y direction. Well, it would be sum of f of n plus sum of f of g is equal to mass times acceleration. Now in this case, f of n is just f of n. We don't have a number there. Um, add it to negative f of g, so that just becomes minus f of g. Mass is the mass, and acceleration is actually centripetal acceleration or radial r, radial acceleration, which means acceleration towards the center. And if that is true, then f of n minus f of g is equal to, oh, and since it's radial acceleration, it's negative, right? We, we talk, so we're substituting for acceleration. We know it's radial acceleration. It's not zero. It's acceleration towards the center. Usually we get zero on a plane surface when we don't move up or down, but in a uniform circular motion, there's a change of direction happening, constantly telling the object to go towards the center of the circle, turning it around little by little. So that is negative A of R based on our signs up uh, out here. And so we have negative M A of R. So let's just write it in terms of normal force. That means force of gravity minus M A R. So whatever the force of gravity is, it'll be reduced by the mass of the car, times the acceleration towards the center of the circle, and that will be the normal force. It'll be something smaller than the force of gravity. Now this is for going towards, uh, for what happens at point A in this diagram of a hill and you know a slope. So now let's work on B, what happens in use case B. In use case B, we are on a flat surface, so the car feels a normal force due to grip surface and it feels the force of gravity. So the sum of all forces in the y direction is again, the normal force. And this time I'll pick a different sign. I'll make the normal force direction negative and the force of gravity positive, doesn't matter. Normal force is negative plus the force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration. Now in this case, there's no uniform circular motion. And so the acceleration isn't changing directions or anything like that. And acceleration actually is zero in the y direction. There is no acceleration as a number. There's no acceleration due to change of direction. There's no acceleration period. So you just have negative f of n plus f of g is equal to mass times zero is zero. So we add f of n to both sides and we end up with f of n equals f of g. So this is bigger than a because in a, whatever f of g was, we were subtracting from it. So definitely use case b has a bigger f of n. Let's look at the use case c. In use case c, we're you know, at the bottom of the hill, rounding up, and the force of gravity is still pointing down. The normal force is still pointing up. And where's the acceleration? Well, the center of the circle, the change in direction, we're getting pushed up towards the center of the circle is up at this point. So the acceleration, radial acceleration is upwards. And that means that the sum of all forces in the y direction is, let's 
let's pick uh, science. I'm going to put pick negative for f of g and positive for f of n, which means, of course, if that direction is positive, then acceleration upwards is also positive. So positive f of n, and it doesn't matter. You can switch to science. I'll show that. Plus force of gravity, which is negative, is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, mass is mass. For acceleration, I'll substitute the positive ar, right? Because that's the radial acceleration. It's not zero. There is an acceleration. It's towards the center, and that's positive ar. And the force of gravity is negative f of g, and this is positive f of n. Move everything around, and you get f of g plus mass times yeah. So here, normal force is bigger than whatever the force of gravity is because you add into the force of gravity. So if you had to choose, you remember the first, um, and let me show you with the different signs. So if the signs were um, going down the hill for normal force and for force of gravity, I just want to show it. So here we pick plus and minus, and we pick minus and plus. It's the same thing as long as you indicate that they're opposing directions. Um, as you go down the hill and back up, the acceleration change in direction radially is towards the center of the circle it's up. So now that gets a negative sign. The sum of all the forces in y direction is negative f of n plus positive force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration. That becomes negative f of n plus force of gravity. And you substitute for a mass times negative acceleration due to um, negative acceleration towards the center of the circle, negative AR. Uh, so f of n, you know, you multiply both sides by negative one to switch the sound signs around, and that this becomes from negative to positive, this becomes from positive to negative, this becomes negative to positive, and here you are. And again, f of n is f of g plus mass times f. So you notice this and this are the same. There's, there's no difference in these equations. The only thing that's important is you give opposing signs consistently to directions. It doesn't matter which one is positive, which one is negative, as long as everything opposite to positive is negative. Okay, so coming back. So at point A, we take away from the force of gravity. At point B, normal force is equal to the force of gravity. And at point C, normal force is force of gravity plus MAR. Where am I getting these things from? We just solved them here, here, and here. We just solved them. So where do we feel the lightest? Well, clearly, you know, this is the lightest because the normal force is the smallest at this point, right? It's the smallest. We get very little push up on our feet. So if you feel light, here we get, we get a lot of push. So we feel heaviest. And the relationship of normal force is f of n at a is less than f of n at b is less than f of n at c. Okay, feel free to rewind the video, go back and if it doesn't make sense, watch it again. So this answers uh, the relative normal forces, how they compare at A, B, and C. It also answers which is largest and smallest in terms of normal force. The normal force at C is largest. Normal force at A is smallest. Next is where do we feel, as a driver, feel the heaviest or the lightest? Again, when we have a lot of pressure pushing up against our feet, we feel heavy. So at C, we feel heaviest, and at A, we feel lightest because at A, it's almost like we're flying in the air. We're almost flying off, so we feel very light. Uh, next one is how fast can the car go without losing contact? And now they're talking about point A. So we'll just use the formula from A. From A, we figured out, hey, the normal force was, you know, force of gravity minus mass times acceleration towards the center. You know, if, if we felt no push from the ground at all, like if we felt, you know, opposite of that, we would fly off. But if we felt no push, if the normal force was zero from the ground at all, that would be perfect. We would feel just light enough without flying off the hill. So with that assumption, we'll put normal force to zero. And then we'll move things around. And we find out that we add mass times acceleration to both sides. 
and we expand on AR, which we know is V square over R. We know about, we substitute the formula here. And for, for F of G, we just say mass times acceleration due to gravity, which is another way of writing it is mass times gravity. Mass and mass cancel out from both sides. And we get V square over, and for R, they had used a big R, so I'm gonna switch over to that. Carrying on, V square is equal to big R times gravity. V is equal to square root of big R times gravity. And where's the big R from? Uh, that's how they define their radius measurement. So this is how fast the car would have to go at top of the hill to not lose contact and still make us feel light as a feather. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.